Hey everyone, and welcome to Teaching During a Pandemic. I'm sure many of you never figured you'd be teaching online, certainly not this week. So I thought I'd put together a couple videos, starting with this one, where I give you some information about how the heck you're going to get classes online like yesterday. As you probably know, COVID-19 and coronavirus is a reality for the world that is causing many schools to shut down. And in fact, some faculty to be quarantined. So the question for you is, how do you deal with the situation while maintaining instructional continuity? I have some ideas about how to get things online as quickly as possible. The first thing you have to decide is whether you're going to teach synchronously or asynchronously. And cutting through all the buzzwords, synchronously means like teleconference, like Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting. And just to be clear, that's easier for you to do right away. But your students might have to figure out the technology. On the other hand, you could teach asynchronously, meaning you would make videos like this one that the students could watch later and give them assignments related to those videos. That's a really powerful tool, but you'll see that it's actually hard to do that well. So which one is right for you? Stay tuned to see what technology is required and what steps are involved so you can decide whether you want to teach synchronously or asynchronously. And by the way, you can do what I do, which is mix both of them. If you use them both effectively and in the right places, that can be the ultimate for the students. You could turn lemons into lemonade by making this coronavirus thing a great pedagogical improvement. But then again, some of you are just looking to survive this period. So let's get to it. First and foremost, you're going to need some equipment, and the most important equipment is for audio recording. You're now hearing this on a higher quality microphone. How does it sound compared to the video you just watched when I was recording via webcam? Well, here's a couple quick ways to record good audio. You can get a condenser microphone, like this one, the MV51 by Shure, which is gonna have a nice high quality sound, big wide capture, costs about 150 bucks. Or get yourself a headset with a boom microphone. These cost $40 or less, and they still work real well. The second piece of equipment you're going to need, in addition to your computer, of course, is a webcam, especially if you're doing any type of video. Yes, your computer comes with a webcam, but by having one that's separate, you can adjust the height and get better capture in terms of audio and video, which is gonna really help you have a good presentation. You can also get great video capture right from your iPhone. The audio capture is not great, so I recommend investing in a uh, lightning connected microphone like the Shure MV88. But you can capture video right from your iPhone and the quality will be high definition and look excellent. The thing is you wanna invest in a nice little stand especially one that allows you to articulate the angle of the camera so that you can get that camera angle just right. This also might be a bit low for desktop recordings, so you may want something taller for that. Now that I'm back at my desk, I can show you what a synchronous video looks like. We're currently on Zoom, and I could be syncing with students anywhere in the world using this platform. It's teleconferencing. You're just watching a recording of something that's happening live, and I can do a lot with this live. For example, I can share my screen and show students some PowerPoint presentations. Let me give you an example of that. It looks a lot like real class, and I'm gonna pull it up right now. And so now I'm sharing with you my screen showing PowerPoint, and I can give a lecture or introduce some class topic, just like I would in normal classroom life. So like I said, synchronous Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting is going to be the easiest thing for you to do. You can just proceed with teaching relatively normally, go through your learning objectives, go through your class, go through your slides, talk about it the same way you would if you were giving a lecture or holding a discussion. In fact, you can do some fun things as well. How about presenting from Tahiti? That's a nice change of pace given the gloomy atmosphere that might persist. And in addition, did you notice that there are words on the bottom of this screen? I'm able to make this ADA compliant without any extra effort by just running PowerPoint and having subtitles enabled. That's a great way for me to make sure that my class is accessible to everybody. And again, this is pretty easy. I've already got these slides made. I was going to present them in class. So all I have to do is schedule a Zoom meeting and host it that way. Recording a Zoom sync and setting it up is really easy, especially if you have a learning management system like Blackboard. Let me show you what my Blackboard site looks like. And you can apply these same tools to Canvas or any other learning management system. So you should have on your screen now a screen share, as if we were doing this live via Zoom, of my Blackboard's website. And what I can do is I can create a new tool link over here, 
tool link and I will choose one of my plugins, Zoom Meetings, and we can name it whatever we want. I might just name it Zoom or name it Connect or whatever you want to call it. I've already done that. It created this link here called Zoom Sync. So we just click that link, launches a tool, and you see all the meetings that I have upcoming. How do you schedule a new one? Real simple. Click Schedule a Meeting, put in the name, description if you want, the time and place and how long it will occur. A couple settings for you to think about. I like to have my video turned off when I start. That allows me to turn on my video to signify the start of class. I like the students to have their video turned on so I can verify that they're there, but your mileage might, may vary. I don't recommend requiring a meeting password or enabling join before host, but you should mute participants upon entry so you don't hear a lot of jarbled background noise. I don't use the waiting room function, but I do record the meeting automatically and I record it in the cloud. And especially if you don't happen to have a, an upgraded MacBook 4K Pro, you want to record this in the cloud because recording on your desktop is actually very computer intensive. And for your students, it might be even easier because all they'll see is on their learning management system, an opportunity to join those sessions. And that's it. They hit join, maybe download some software, and they're going to be logged into that virtual environment. Like I said, the synchronous Zoom option is going to be your easiest way to get up and running if you need to do it quickly. And it's a lot like teaching a regular class. I think Zoom is pretty easy. GoToMeeting and WebEx are also pretty easy. This might be the way to go if you're a little worried about creating asynchronous content. Now let's talk about recording asynchronous content. I've jumped into PowerPoint, which is my number one recommended way for you to create video content quickly and easily. Most instructors are already familiar with how to create PowerPoint slides. All you have to do is to record your voice over these slides and export the resulting file, and you've got an asynchronous video that you can use. I'm going to talk about four things in this video. First, I'll describe what is asynchronous distance education. Then I'm going to tell you about my preferred method of creating an asynchronous video via voice over PowerPoint. Third, I'll address the talking head video, an alternative, and then briefly conclude on some thoughts about asynchronous versus synchronous. Asynchronous distance education can comprise many things, including just giving students homework or corresponding with them over a series of email. In fact, the original distance education law course was basically carried back and forth by the Pony Express. But in today's modern internet era, students expect recorded videos. So how do you produce those without a lot of background in video production? I'll give you a few guidelines about how to make effective videos. For one thing, keep them short five to 15 minutes each, which unfortunately means, sorry, university lecturers, you can't just dump the video you recorded from class two years ago online and figure it's going to work. You're really gonna have to recreate the video for the express purpose of giving the student something short, pointed, and uh, clear, concise, right to the point. That's what students expect and need from online videos. Otherwise, just do a Skype class. And you're going to want to juxtapose these videos with some type of active learning exercise, like a test, a quiz, a journal entry, or a participation on a discussion board, because otherwise students might not pay that much attention. Why do I recommend VoiceOver PowerPoint? Well, as you can probably see from this video, I can go through content pretty quickly, and you are being presented with the most relevant material on the screen. It's not particularly distracting because there's not a lot to look at, there's a few words on the screen and my voice over top. You don't have a talking head, and I have these guidelines about what we're going to discuss. So hopefully you find that to be effective and not so distracting. Of course, it would be distracting if I had a ton of words on the slide that you were busy reading while I was talking. But if I have bullet points that I follow along in my lecture, I can avoid distracting the learner and avoid creating cognitive overload. In addition, if I do this properly, and I hope to this time, I don't have any post-production needs. I can do this recording in PowerPoint, export the video, put it online, and I'm done. I don't have to learn how to use iMovie. I don't have to learn Final Cut Pro. I don't have to bother with various online software. Nope. All I need to do is run PowerPoint with my microphone attached, and I can upload a video. So that makes it easy. And easy is the way to go in this pandemic crisis, guys. Let's just get it online. We don't have to create the world's best videos, but let's make sure they're impactful, that they're pedagogically effective, that we're not distracting students unduly, and that we're going to spend the appropriate amount of time, given that we have a lot of content, we've got to move online like now. 
Here's how to actually create that PowerPoint video. Once you've made your slides, go to Record Slideshow, and then you'll see something that looks like Presenter View, but you'll see a recording in the background. When you're done, simply go to Export, and you have to select your file format. If you're on a Mac, choose MOV. If you're on a PC, choose MP4. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going with MOV format, and just export it. And boom, that's all you have to do. You're ready to go. Why don't I recommend a talking head video? Well, you saw a talking head video at the beginning of this, and that was meant to be a quick introduction to me, so you got to see me. So that was effective because you don't know who I am. Putting a face to a name helps before going into the rest of this content, but your students know you. Do they really need to see you for the entire lecture every time? Plus, if you record a talking head video, you're probably going to say, uh, um, like, uh, you might, um, what? Uh, 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 halt over your words, especially if you don't have a script. And if you have a script, what are you going to read it? Do you have a teleprompter? It's not that easy to make good looking videos. Think about what it takes to be like a newscaster. Is that you? So you're probably going to have to edit the videos afterwards in post production. That takes some time. You're going to have to learn some software. So I think talking head videos have a role to play. I think it's important to have some human element in this crazy time of the coronavirus, but use them sparingly. And for the most part, if you're going to teach asynchronous, default to the voice over PowerPoint. So in conclusion, I recommend that you create short, as in 5 to 15 minute videos, using voice over PowerPoint. And juxtapose them on your learning management system, like Blackboard or Canvas, with tests, essays, journals, and other discussions that get students actively thinking about what you just presented. You can incorporate some talking head videos to give some human element, and in fact, you really do want to be thinking about how to keep the students comfortable during a period of isolation and quarantine, and a human element is important, but consider whether or not you're better off just having a synchronous session uh, where you can actually hear and see the students as well as them hear and see you. When I say juxtapose your active learning content with your passive learning information, here's what I mean. I have the students watch a video on a particular topic, and in this case, immediately afterwards, they'll do a journal entry. The idea is that once they've received the passive content, we want to engage them in the learning process. This is scientifically shown to help long-term retention and understanding. I recommend you do this with all of your short videos so that they have some type of short response essay or journal entry or blog post or test immediately afterwards. That will activate their learning. So that's how to create an online class. It's really not that hard, especially if you go with the synchronous method or create the voiceover PowerPoints for your students at least to have a preview of the class before they get started. So I hope this really helps you out with getting online during this crazy time. And remember, the sun is still shining, the birds are still chirping, the wind chimes are still chiming, and life is still going on. So let's make sure we have a great experience for our students during this time too. I hope this helps you create instructional continuity and feel free to leave comments below. By the way, if you're looking for more detail, I published a paper on SSRN and I'll put a link down there as well. Good luck and happy teaching.